All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Luke here. Um, today, I'm going to tell you how I pay $500 a month for a Hellcat. Oh my God. And uh, just kind of giving you a little background on people that don't know anything um, about me or the channel yet. Um, I do work for a Dodge dealer. I'm an internet sales manager there. So it helps me a little bit, but that doesn't mean that uh, you have to be in FCA to get uh, the deal that I got. Um, honestly, I started looking around on the forums a little bit um, and seeing what kind of deals people were getting on Hellcats. And I found this thread on Hellcat.org um, and it actually was, you know, a, a thread about purchasing Hellcats. And I said, oh, that's perfect, you know, I guess it's a, you know, a big deal. Go check it out. It seems like, you know, from what I, from what I read, it was almost like well over half of the people that bought Hellcats leased them. And, um, you know, I can understand that. A lot of more expensive cars people lease. Um, I hadn't really completely thrown the idea out because, um, you know, I, I've, in my, as I've got older and uh, it seems like I like something new um, a lot more than when I used to like to keep everything for a long time. So I figured it wouldn't be a bad idea as long as I can get a good deal. Um, and there was a lot of people out there that were getting them for, you know, in the 600s um, you know, a month, which, you know, it wasn't bad. Um, most leases that I found out there with standard money down or between two and three grand down were like in the 700s. Um, <clears throat> and that was before people's dealer fees and taxes and all that. So call it 750. Um, well, I started doing a little bit more research and, and there was a few people that they waited or they took their time or they didn't order one specifically. They just found one on a lot and they got a good deal on it. I'm sure you've seen other people do that as well. Well, you can do that with leases as well. I'm gonna explain how leases work a little bit more in depth here too and how you can still negotiate a lease. Um, so basically what I did was I was working a lease for one of my friends on a Hellcat and I, and I saw the residual value and the money factor was actually really good. So in a lease, the residual value is basically uh, percentage so 50 percent 60 percent 62 63 um, anything over 50 percent is actually really good and um, the Hellcats at the time when I started looking were I think 65 percent so it was, it was actually a really good number I was like wow that's really high because the only thing that really comes close in, in in the FCA world was the Jeep Wrangler and they're usually in the 60s and right now they're actually like 70 um, and then there's the money factor or kind of like an interest rate and that was 0. 0.00011. Now, to get to, well, what does that mean? Um, like a percentage rate that most people can understand is you times that number by 2,400. So if you take 0. 0.00011 times 2,400, that gives you a relative interest rate. Um, it doesn't work the same as an interest rate, but it's very close. Um, it's what you're you're paying to borrow the money for the three years or however long of the term your lease is. That equates to about 0.25%, I think, if I remember correctly. I'll do the math on the screen for you guys. So when you think about that, um, you've got a high residual value, which means there's a lot left in the amount of the car. So the, the residual value, let's just say the car is 70 grand, and the residual value is... 65%. So you're going to have 35% of that, technically, is what you pay over the term of the lease. So, you know, let's just say that's, you know, uh, divided by 36 months, and then you have your, that's your payment, and then add on the interest rate or the money factor, which is hardly anything, and then the regular fees and all that, and that's how they get come to your payment. So I, I saw a few people out there getting deals where they were 10% off MSRP and me being a dealer, I think that's crazy because <clears throat> it's well under invoice and uh, dealers have things like hold back and it's a couple, usually about a thousand or two thousand dollars extra depending on the vehicle below invoice and that's, that's literally what they make. So um, if they own the vehicle. You know, like they, they have it on their lot. If they have to go get it from another lot, a lot of times they don't get that extra money um, below invoice. So 
I said, well, what the heck, you know, because I was looking at this car, um, and I was looking at a Stinger, and I was looking at a used Audi, but there was a few things that just kind of turned me off, you know, it's hard, I'm sorry, Kia Stinger guys, but I mean, it's a Kia, so that was something I had to get over, I did test drive it, very nice car, very nice interior, I'm not gonna down the Kia Stingers, they're actually a really nice vehicle, um, and I highly considered it, but the leases on them were like, in the 600s again, <clears throat> and when I was going to look at the used Audi, well, because I would want like an RS7, um, or at least an S7, and even those in the year that I wanted were, you know, pushing 50, 60 grand, so it was going to be a very high payment, um, plus then you have a used German car, which, you know, the parts and everything are just ridiculously expensive, and I work for a Dodge dealer, so I figured, well, if anything's going to happen, let me try the Hellcat first and see what I can do. And I obviously had a charger already, so I know and love the car. It would basically just be the same thing, but more horsepower and uh, better suspension. Isn't it? All right, so what I did was um, I have a tool that lets me search um, the uh, basically the back end of, of Chrysler the dealerships um, for all of the vehicles that are on the lot. And what I did was I did a search in Florida, basically for 250 miles, and I looked at all of the oldest Hellcats. Uh, I think 320 days was about the oldest one I found, um, and then I kind of just got a list of all the ones, eh, probably till about 180 days, and that's how long they've been sitting on the lot. Um, and what I did is then I started from the oldest and then worked down that list to one that I would actually purchase. Um, so I grabbed, um, you know, the first half a dozen uh, vehicles that I would purchase, and I formulated an email, basically being as straightforward as possible, which I know a lot of people will be against this, oh, you don't want to give the dealer all the information. Well, you know, being in on the other side of this, um, you know, and I work for a dealer where we really don't play the back and forth games. We've got no dealer fees and all that kind of stuff, um, which, by the way, I can help you with buying a car if you want me to. Um, just put a comment below or my email. I'll give you my email later. Um, you know, being straightforward, there's nothing wrong with that because we, we don't mind an educated public. Like, if you know about how much your car is worth, if you know about how much the car you're looking for is going for, well, that's fine. Then, then you know a fair deal when you get one. So it's, it's good for the consumer and good for the person who's trying to sell it because, you know, they don't have to, you don't have to do the back and forth. I mean, it is what it is. So I formulated an email of my trade, which was my scat pack, um, you know, 20, 20 or so high quality pictures, detailed pictures of the car, um, explaining what was on it, what, how many miles, um, you know, it's been very well taken care of, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I knew what my trade was worth because I've looked at the auctions, you know, Kelly Blue Book and Black Book and just kind of got a, um, you know, a roundabout figure of what I would give somebody on trade in for my car and what was fair. You know, I wasn't asking for thousands of dollars more than what my car is worth because I knew that if I got the deal, if my car was worth this much and I could get the car for this much, then I know that it would work out. So it all comes down to the bottom line. It doesn't matter how much your car is worth. It doesn't matter how much they're trying to sell you their car for it all comes down to the bottom line and that's what you have to really figure out before you go to buy a car um, so I formulated everything in this email and I basically kind of kind of downplayed the 2018s a little bit I mean the 2019s are about to come out I already knew they had the inner chiller they had a different grill they had more horsepower they've got the factory line lock they've got the torque um, uh, basically the, uh, the different launch control so I kind of said, you know, hey, that's that's worth like, you know, at least two, three grand right there. Um, depreciation is like another eight grand a year, it seems like on the Hellcats. You know, so I'd be a buyer at about, depending on which one I was looking at, about $10,000 off sticker or 10% off sticker. Anyway, I formulated this email and basically what I did is when I got a couple of dealership, I would find the internet manager or the salesman or somebody I could email and I would basically just copy and paste this email and saw what they would come back with. Most people are gonna tell you you're out of your flipping mind, um, or they want you to come in, and, and I get that sales tactic, it's fine, but it, it's easy enough because there was plenty of pickings. Uh, you know, there was there was so many out there, believe it or not, but um, that you, you don't waste your time with them, you know? If they don't wanna do business with you, then, then that's fine, move on to the next one. Um, you've already got five 
emails out there, six emails out there. So anyway, I sent these emails, and the people that told me to basically, you know, screw off, well, no big deal. I just marked them off the list. Some people would reply back, and they'd say, oh, we need to see your trade. Well, I'm like, well, you're three hours away. I'm not going to drive over there if you can't give me a trade. And my excuse for me personally was I had a friend that was in the car business locally that worked for a dealer, and he could see all the invoices. Now, that helped me, obviously, as well, which I can help you do this, too. So I knew the invoices on all of the cars. I knew how much they were, and I knew, you know, what the residual fact, you know, the residual value was and the money factor. And I could punch it into my own program because I do it every day. I mean, I, I make leases for people. I sell cars to people on the internet, basically. So I desk my own deals. So when people would come back with numbers, I'd be, you know, I'd be like, look, this just isn't going to work or this isn't making sense to me. You know, or I'd see if I could get, you know, well, what residual value are you using? You know, and if they come back with some BS, basically, well, then I know they're just a bunch of crap and I move on to the next one. Well, somebody, one of the dealers, actually got back to me and said, well, okay, if we did, if we did, um, you know, your car for this and this is the residual value and this is the uh, money factor going on, then your payment would be this. And it actually came back relatively close to the numbers that it was about 541 and I said okay well those numbers I punch it in my system and those numbers work I mean they make sense so I continue to talk with those people I just said hey look man I'm honestly trying to be at 500 out the door um, you know I understand you know don't take it as an insult that's what I'm looking for um, you know what is there anything else we can do here and he said well you know they came back with 500 plus taxes which was about 531 it was only $10 off a month. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about what I had. I had my, my trade in, I had about, I had about $7,000 worth of equity in it. And what I was trying to get them to do, my negotiation there was, okay, well, I want you to give me a check for 4,000, put the rest towards the car. And then I want the numbers to be this. So it was about 3,000 down. So, um, to be upfront about this, to get this deal for 500, yeah, I mean, you're probably going to need it. I'd say probably three grand. I mean, but most leases take about three grand. 1,500 of that is just first payment, taxes, fees, all that junk anyway. So, I mean, most people, usually you would hope they'd have a couple thousand dollars if they're going to go buy a car. Um, so anyway, what happened here is they came back with, okay, we'll cut you a check for um, 3,500 and um, we'll make it five. I think it was like five, uh, 520 or something like that. And doing my math, we were about $1,600 apart. So really, we're, we're really close to me having the deal that I wanted. And uh, they'd already worked with me and we were being really honest. And the deal was already good at this point. I mean, it was, um, I think it was about six or $7,000 off MSRP. And I said, well, tell you what, look, just let's split the difference. Give me a check for $3,250 and get me $500 out the door and I'll come and buy it. I'll come and sign it. There's no question there. I know what I, I know what it is. I've already driven it. I don't need to test drive it. Um, you know, I, I own a scat pack now. It's the same thing, just more horsepower, blah, blah, blah. And they took it. They said, okay, we'll do that. And so what that equated was basically, it was about 37.50 down. And uh, that's how I got to the 500 a month. Now that actually ended up being $5,500 under invoice. That's a lot. Um, and I think it was about 80, it was about 80 something hundred dollars, $8,000 ish off of MSRP. So I think the sticker on my car was close to 70, it was 69 and change. And they sold it to me for 61 and change. So, I mean, it was, it was a big, big discount. And this was a brand new 2018 that had never been driven. It had 10 miles on it. So it wasn't even one of those ones that was sitting and sitting and sitting and forever. And it was a year old, you know, a, a model year that we weren't in. Like it wasn't a 2017. I mean, this is a 2018. So I thought for what I wanted, it was a good deal. Now, do you need three grand? No. Do you need $3,750? No. To get it to $500 a month? Probably. But I mean, most people are okay with around a $600 payment, you know, in a a $600 payment is feasible with just the standard downs, like 1200 bucks, you know, um, and yeah, you've got to have good credit for a lease. Um, you know, I think tier one rates are probably 730. So, you know, that's another thing that you've got to keep in, 
consideration with getting a lease is you've got to have pretty decent credit. I'm going to take that back. You've got to have good credit because they have different tiers. Um, kind of like the lower your credit score, the more your interest rate is going to be. Well, it's the same thing here, except they have tiers for the money factor. And to get the best money factor and to, you know, maybe have them waive uh, an acquisition fee or something like that, you've got to have the highest credit, which is usually over 730. So I know I switched gears a little bit here in a different outfit. Um, I had to go into work and uh, now we're actually um, out, out of work and I've got MK6 guy with me here again. And uh, we're heading to grab some parts for my Miata. So I figured it'd be a good time to leave off. So um, I think where I was at was around, um, you know, the deal, how it was structured. So they ended up splitting the money, the equity in my car. So it was about seven grand that I had. and. They ended up cutting me a check for $32.50, so basically $37.50 went towards the lease. So, and again, did you need that much money? No. Um, you know, to, to maybe get a $500 payment? Probably. But, um, you know, as I was saying earlier, a lot of people would be okay with a, you know, around a $600 payment, you know, because that's what a lot of people pay for just, you know, normal cars. Um, so it is possible um, to do this, you know, with only, you know, $1,500 or something like that. But again, you do have to have good credit um, and if I didn't go over that you know tier one is usually about above 730 or 740 um, so really that's that's how I got my the deal I got on my Hellcat and um, you know I can actually help you guys if you wanted some help um, you know looking at invoices or you know just making sure you're not going to get screwed over by another dealer um, just hit me up comment um, I'll give you my email and I'll put it on the bottom of the screen as well it's um, it's Q U I X. 09 at gmail so kind of like the channel name actually i do have that email as well so if it's easier quicksilver09 at gmail.com hit me up if you got some questions about buying a car even if you want me to order a car or buy one for you or sell you one i should say um you know i can always do that too you know we sold our demon at at um at sticker and i just ordered someone's red eye at 300 dollars over invoice so you know we're a dealership that's not really out there to to screw everybody over we're really straightforward we have no dealer fees so you know if you want to purchase from me you can do that i can hook you up with the best price i can um you know or if you just want to use my services and uh you know try to help me find a good price on a vehicle in your area just to make sure you're not getting screwed over you know i can verify the deal uh, check out residuals and do all that stuff for you as well so um just hit me up if you guys need anything and uh we'll uh, check you later and make sure to subscribe for more information and don't forget to like. See you next time.